So let's recap a little bit what we have up to now. We have IIS 8.5 installed on Windows 2012. And on IIS, we have our bindings for the example.com website on port 80, which is regular, and HTTPS, or 443, which is the SSL certificate that we installed. What we are going to look at in this video is the activation of a reverse proxy in IIS. A reverse proxy is essentially when a web server is asked for a specific resource, such as a specific URL, anything within a folder, or a subdomain, or the whole domain, or a variation of either, it will essentially um, instead of providing a static resource like an HTML page, will make a secret request to another server or another service um, on the same or different machine, ask it for the resource and then return that to the client. Now, as far as the client goes, it's asking for something on IIS and that's what it's getting. The advantage of this is that IIS is the front end. It's the only thing the client sees. So the background service is not exposed to the internet directly. This also gives us the ability to secure the connection with SSL in IIS without the background service really knowing or caring about it. And it also lets us um, authenticate or use authentication in IIS again, without the background service really caring about it, but we can also provide it with login information. Now, the authentication is beyond the scope of this particular series of videos, but it is a thing that is possible to do. So the first thing that we need to do in order to activate the reverse proxy is we need to install the application request routing um, web component. The application request routing is actually a pretty complex um, piece of software that's within IIS. It lets you do load balancing and server farms and all that, all that jazz. But the important part is that it does let you do reverse proxies. So this is what we're going to do. So it took a few tries for me to find the, uh, the proper website. I'm going to link below on the proper URL to download application request routing. So you can use the link below, um, but basically application request routing and we just install this extension. Now, if, if you've never had the web platform installed, so I don't because it's a new IIS installed, we click on that, run it, and, and once the web platform installer is open, it's actually going to load and it's going to automatically give me the option to install the application request routing. So with the proper URL, it's a few clicks to um, install that. Now we have a couple of, of new options. The server farm here, like I said, the application request routing gives more options. But what we are interested in is simply making one reverse proxy. So there are a couple of ways, like I said, you could have like a subfolder, so slash workflow on your example.com could lead to the workflow server in, in the back end. But what we are going to do is to actually create a subdomain. So we're going to add a website. And because we're adding a website, we have to choose a physical path, though we're not actually going to use it we still need to do it. So let me just do that. And the actual binding is going to be here, um, workflow.example.com. Now this could be anything you want. Um, it could be cotg.example.com. It could be myserver.example.com. It's just whatever subdomain that you want. Um, we're going to add the binding on port 80, and we're also going to add it on port uh, 443 for HTTPS. So back to here, now we have our workflow.example.com. Um, I should be able to open the browser and go to and again, we have the security certificate thing. 
And because I don't, I didn't put a static HTML, like it works, but it tells me that it can't see any any page. So ignore that for now. Um, so what we are going to do exactly and precisely is any request made to workflow.example.com is going to be redirected directly to the uh, workflow on my machine. Now this is a virtual machine and it's going to communicate with my physical machine. Let me show you really quickly what I have on that virtual on that workflow configuration. Um, I have the incident report demo, which is on demo.objectsifflin.com. And this guy has um, two HTTP server input processes. Now, if I'm in the virtual machine and I go on, so if you if you look at the title here, HTTP 405 method not allowed, that, that is the default um, response from workflow when you don't put in an actual um, action or the HTTP action. If I put the appropriate one, so if I go back here and I do this, and I put it in, I have the appropriate response. So essentially, if I 192.168.52.1, that is an internal um, website. It is not available uh, to the public eye. No one can see it unless I do the reverse proxy. This is where I'm going to actually point that reverse proxy. That could be a machine name, can be an IP, it can be another subdomain, it can be anything. But like this is this is what I want to use. So what we need to do now to create that uh, reverse proxy is to go in the URL rewrite. And thankfully, there's an easy rule that we can use. Like there's there's a default thing that we can do here, which is reverse proxy. So you click on add rule, reverse proxy. And then the inbound rule, that is the internal server. That's going to be 192.168 dot 52.1 that's in my case obviously now that could be a server name that could be a different port altogether it can be an IP so but it has to be one single server the enable SSL offloading option is one that we do want um, SSL offloading means that a secured request received from the outside on workflow.example.com can be sent to an unsecured server, so one that doesn't have SSL in the background. The other thing that we do want to do is to check the um, rewrite on the outbound rule. This is because when the request is made to workflow to provide HTML content, the HTML content has a reference to the resources, so the um, style sheets and the JavaScripts and uh, images on the connect server or the connect service. And this is referenced on 192.168.52.1 because this is what we requested. It's a little technical, but essentially you just need to, ch to activate this and put in the same domain name. So we're, we're doing the uh, contrary to the incoming rule. Uh, whereas incoming workflow.example.com turns into the IP address and in outgoing we change the contents so that it points to workflow.example.com. Uh, there's two tiny little changes that we need to make. First one, in the incoming reverse proxy rule, we just need to change this, add the caret and the dollar sign <clears throat> so that it matches anything on the domain, not just a specific resource. So workflow.example.com, the whole thing points to my background server. And starting from this point on, if I open and I change this to workflow.example.com, that should there you go. So that gives me the same thing. If I go on HTTPS, I get the same warning because, again, self-signed certificate, you can ignore that. And I get, <clears throat> again, the same HTML. So workflow.example.com is actually workflow responding to that request. The other thing that we need to change um, in the outbound rule is uh, by default, this looks for links, um, form actions, and images. We just want to add the base 
um, attribute. This is because um, that's exactly where the um, 192.168.52 or you know the background IP will appear. So now we have the reverse proxy on a secured or unsecured line pointing to the backend. So uh, like I said, unsecured or secured, if you want to do only um, HTTPS, what you could do is you could um, rewrite the uh, HTTP or forward the HTTP to HTTPS, or you could just remove the binding. If you go here and you remove the port 80 binding, it will no longer reply or respond to the non-secured uh, subdomain. So this is it for activating the reverse proxy in IIS on a secured connection. Um, in the next video, we are going to talk specifically about capture on the go implementations. So you can skip the next video if you're not interested in capture on the go. Otherwise, see you in a few clicks.